to our UR Home live tour of transit and parking. My name is Channing and I will be the host today. Um, I am a senior communication major and I am from Springdale, Arkansas, which is right next door to Fayetteville. So if you guys have any questions about transit or parking today, please comment those throughout the video. And also today we are lucky enough to have someone from transit and parking join us. So we have David Wilson here with us today. Hi, hey, David. I am David Wilson. I'm the communications director here at Transit and Parking. And if you don't know where we're located, we're exactly right across Razorback Road from Bud Walton Arena. Actually, I'm looking at Bud Walton Arena right now. Yeah, let's pan over there and take a look at it. Yeah. And you can see, that'll give you a good vantage point. Uh, if you need to do any business with us at Transit and Parking, you can do that online. Or you can call us, but some people want to come in, so that's where we are. You can see a parking lot across the way that's being renovated even as we speak. That's going to be a good spot in the coming school year for those who want to park and ride because Razorback Transit buses will come through there. They'll pick you up and they'll take you to the heart of campus. Um, at this point, I think we're going to go inside. Yes. Sounds good. To show you in there. we got about eight people tuning in. Let us know where you're from yeah. and uh, what day maybe you're moving to campus if you are. All right. So we're heading into the... Uh, what is this building called, David? It's an administrative building. Okay. Uh, it also houses UAPD. Uh huh. And it has uh, tech support upstairs. Uh, but we're on the first floor and we're going there now. So technology, parking, and the police. <laughs> hey, oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Beth is chiming in from Mansfield, Texas. Yeah. Awesome. Glad to have you, Beth. If you come in, uh, to do business here you can go to the front counter that's where most people can take care of mm -hmm. whatever they need but today we're going to go inside to our conference room so we'll come this way there's the front counter area and david i think we've seen a couple people wearing the vests those yellow vests are those parking Wearing the yellow vest? Some, some could be parking okay. enforcement wears those, but we have so much construction on campus that sure. some, uh, they come in here and do business with them too. Okay. We're going to go back this way. Ooh, we're back in the back of parking. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes of parking. <laughs> Most people never get to see this part of our operation. Right, right. And you know, it's parking is one side of it, but you guys also do transit. Yes. So buses and everything like and that. And their offices are separate from this one. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, so much goes into it behind the scenes. People don't always realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go into our conference room here and settle in for a bit. In this conference room, we have a lot of meetings and training sessions, and some decisions are made behind the scenes. Uh, I will point out that we don't make all of the decisions on campus. It has to be approved by a committee, the traffic uh, parking and transit committee and they're made up of people who um, are not in this department so that's a good thing we have a little bit of uh, influence from from a lot of people that aren't, aren't working here uh, a lot of people do work on campus though so they have a vested interest in trying to make you know the best decisions they meet around this conference table every month or so okay so yeah they make some important decisions that affect all of us patrice is trying to chime in from fort worth and we have paula dunn from south lake texas so we got quite a few people tuned in yeah. that's great yeah <laughs> excellent okay well yeah um can you tell us a little bit about when it comes to parking like uh, how is it even divided? Are there colors or names or what kind of parkings do you, do you even offer? Well, I always tell people at orientation, if you want a parking permit, it depends on how much you want to spend and how close you need to be to where you're working or to where your residence hall is. And I can show you on a map. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look. Right here. Of course, this is all available online. If you go to our website, uh, parking.uark.edu, this map is updated all of the time, and so the latest version is always online. But basically, uh, we get asked by students a lot about the red resident reserve. Sure. And you, you can see the red shaded areas. Those are the ones that are they're highly sought after. They're the most expensive, too. Um, and students pay to park in that area so that they can be very, you know, very close to the residence hall. And that's a big intersection between our area of housing and parking's area is resident reserved, because those are reserved for residents. Absolutely. And we have to work, you know, you and I know this, but everybody that's viewing doesn't mm -hmm. know it. Uh, we have to work so close with housing on a lot of this because 
uh, we have to coordinate our efforts to make sure everybody has what they need. Oh, and if you're waiting for, um, on the waiting list for resident reserve, we just updated on movein.uart.edu the latest numbers of resident reserve waiting list numbers from parking. So thank you for those numbers. And speaking of move in, that's coming right up. That is a big, big weekend. Mm -hmm. um, we, we applaud housing for what they put together. Uh, they even, have, could I mention your app? Because I got it right here, uh, movein.uart.edu. Yeah, our I website, app, so they can website. find. Uh, you can look at that. It's got a ton of information that you would want to look at before you, before you arrive to campus. Mm -hmm. That's for newcomers in particular. Uh, but these uh, shaded areas, of course, the blue is reserved. Students do not get that. That's for employees who want to park uh, close to where they're working. Okay. Uh, yellow is for faculty and staff. You can see we, we've got a lot of people that work at the university. We do. And so. they all have to park there. And here's an interesting bit of trivia. Uh, employees here pay for parking, too, just like students. And what? I, I will add that even people who work for transit and parking, we pay for our parking. Have to pay well. for your own parking. Yes, we, 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 we have to abide by all of the, the rules that are in place, just like the, they are for everyone. As a staff member, I can testify to that. Yes. I have it taken out of my paycheck every, every month. This, um, uh, we, the, the vast majority of the parking area on campus is the green shaded area. This is the standard green student permit. So we have a lot of students. Uh, that's only about $101 mm -hmm. for a permit for the entire year. That's very affordable as the prices for those things go. Yeah. Um, and a lot of students do that because that's, that's all they need. Uh, the biggest bargain we have is down in this area on our map. Uh, this is the remote parking. It's south of the main campus. It's only about $25.70 for the whole year. You can park there with that permit. Uh, some students do that, uh, especially people who commute. Uh, you, if you're going to get on a bus and ride somewhere anyway, you might as well just pay for a cheap permit and then get on the bus and it'll take you right to the heart of campus. So, so we're glad to have that. Now all together, if you had all of the garages, all of the parking areas, all throughout campus, we have 14,000 spaces to park. Sure. More than 14,000. Um, David, we do have a question that came in from okay. Michelle. Now, she's asking about her specific daughter, and I know we can't necessarily get into that situation right here, but what she does ask is um, they were, you know, wanted resident reserved for uh, the Adohi area. Um, that particular uh, parking lot may not be open at the beginning of the school year, so they took a parking uh, garage pass instead. I'm curious, how does that work with, like, um, I think they're given options. You can take a parking garage or or you go on the waiting list for resident reserve. Well, there's two different waiting lists. And of course, one I know you're aware of is through housing, the resident reserve parking. Mm -hmm. uh, you get on the waiting list for that. And we go down the list. We just, you know, we work our way through the list. And the ones obviously at the top of the list, they, they are going to be approached first about do they want to buy that permit. Uh, the garage list works the same way, except it's not coordinated through housing. Mm -hmm. um, we accumulate that list by those who are interested and we keep that list and, and when we go through that to offer permits to people who want them it's just a first come first serve basis so um you can be on both lists and a lot of families are if, but you you have to make a decision at some point if you're offered the uh garage uh then you're committed to the garage okay or if you're you, if you're offered the i shouldn't say if you're offered that if you accept that offer mm -hmm. you're committed to the garage if you accept an office uh, offer for the resident reserved, then you're committed to that. Um, you, you can't just switch to a garage after that. But gotcha. Is, usually you're going to know by the time you get an offer, you know, where you really need to be or want to be. If someone didn't know if they were on resident reserved or not, who would they call to find out if they were on a resident reserved waiting list? You can call our office anytime okay. during the regular business hours, 575-PARK, P-A-R-K. Uh, you can ask to speak to someone about where like where you are on, on the list um perfect at this point we've worked through much of that process i don't want to say that if you don't have an offer yet you won't get one but th at this stage in the summer a lot of times we have worked through a lot of that you know a lot of the offers have been filled so i can't speak to anybody individually as to whether mm -hmm. they're going to get to, to best to call in if they have individual questions they, about they their situation okay fantastic well, did we? Uh... Yeah. So we <laughs> have a few questions that mm -hmm. got asked on our social media the past couple of days. So do you mind answering those for us? That'd be great. Awesome. That'd be great. 
So the first question is from Amy, and she asks, my friend was moved from Pomfret to Reed. Does her parking go with her? Okay, uh, I have to kind of answer that. I have to kind of qualify the answer to that because when they say, does your parking go with you, mm -hmm. I'm assuming they mean resident reserve parking. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, and, and this is something that's rare this year where we've had some people move from one residence to the other because of a decision that was made. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to you know, have someone pay for resident reserve parking and have to park across campus. If you do get resident reserved, it's gonna be in the, the particular zone where you're gonna be living. Mm -hmm. So um, they're making adjustments for that even as we speak. I know earlier this week, one person in our office was working on that because we just found out that we were having some students living in a different area. So we're not going to make something inconvenient for a person. Uh, now, if you're talking about a standard green permit, that won't change. You know, if you have that permit, you just you park wherever you find a space in those lots, and that is true no matter what residence hall that you might be living in. Sure. We had one more question come in as we were talking. Um, this is from um, Aline, and is asking about the um, Adohi specifically, um, because Adohi's resident reserve maybe wasn't going to be ready at the time. I would say, Aline, probably the best thing is to call uh, parking specifically about that to get the answer, but I don't know if you have anything additional well, to add you, uh, to the Adohi you resident can reserve. You call on that at this time, but they may not be able to tell you anything more specific than what I'm about to say. What we have been told is that the parking across the road from Adohi, and that would be to the east of the new residence hall. Okay. That's not ready yet. It's not going to be ready. We were told about October it would be ready, uh, but with uh, construction crews and contractors and deadlines and so on, you know, that's not a guarantee. All we know is we're not gonna start the year with that. That doesn't mean you don't have a place to park. Uh, they are working on assigning people who are in Adohi to the same zone, but in a different red shaded area. Um, now, how many numbers we're talking about there, I can't answer that, but they're working on it even as we speak. There are some who are gonna be in Adohi who uh, need to park in a green shaded area anyway, and some are gonna do that by choice. Some, some students just say, I don't want to pay that much money for parking, I'm, I'm fine paying $101 or whatever, and then they, they park wherever they can in the green shaded area. So um, that's the latest that we have on that. Um, you know, in an ideal situation, we'd like to start the year with all of the parking open, but some things are beyond our control on that. So but that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, thank Great you. Um, one more question from the, from the um, feed here. Jane asks, are lots 56D and B on Leroy Pond, uh, Leroy Pond Drive general student parking? And I think the map would tell us. The map indicates that. Yeah. I, I encourage everybody to look at the map online because it is updated, but you're talking about uh, these areas. And uh, there are symbols on the maps that tell, um, that designate something different. For mm -hmm. instance, if there's a box around the number Mm -hmm. that, that indicates that you can't park there overnight. And oh, there, there's the legend right there. Yeah. Yes, the legend certainly helps you with that. But um, there are certain lots, for instance, that you don't want to leave your vehicle there overnight. Mm -hmm. And usually the reason for that is that is an area that has our bus traffic in the morning. A lot of commuters will park there just to catch a bus. And if the lot's already full, they can't do that. So there's a reason for every uh, requirement that's out there. Uh, but lot 56 is very spacious and a lot of people like to use it. Um, but 56B and 56D, uh, you can use that too, but you also need to remember that we have a lot of people that work here, and if they have, for instance, a yellow parking permit, that grants them access to a green area as well. So some employees use that, and they have a right to because they paid for a permit just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. Wealth of information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. What other questions do we have come in from our Instagram? Yeah. Question. So our next question is from Whitney, and mm -hmm. she asks, where do we park after moving in on August 15th? Okay, that information is going to come from housing. One thing we're glad uh, to report is that there is an article coming out very soon on Arkansas Newswire. A lot of our staff and faculty read that every day to see what's going on, on campus. It's our and campus newspaper, sort of. Yeah. It is, and we, uh, we encourage the incoming students to look at that, too. 
Uh, that article, I think it's going to be Monday now, that it'll be online. In I think it'll be about Monday, yeah. yeah. If, uh, if you look at that, it's going to give you the rundown of where you can park, but also the, the uh, link that I mentioned earlier about move in will have that information. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, it's hard to answer the question because it depends on what residence hall you're going to move into mm -hmm. as to where you may want you know, to park your vehicle after the move in and also where your parents can put their uh, vehicle uh, for a little while after the move in, but we uh, have made space available in some of the parking garages. Do you mind saying which one specifically? Um, yep. Gar Garland Garage, which is on the north part of campus. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with that if you went to orientation. There are some levels, and again, that's going to be provided in the uh, in the link and in the article that I referenced. Uh, the Harmon Garage, a uh, bit of trivia, that's the largest parking garage in the entire state of Arkansas, more than 2,000 spaces. We'll have some room for parents who want to use that uh, during that time of transition when they're helping a family member move in. So those will be available as well as the green areas that we looked at on the map earlier. Uh, we try to be real flexible during that time because it is a, a lot of people on campus sure. are trying to move in. But, but um, yeah, if, you, if you're patient, you'll find the spot that you need to be in and then take care of business and then you can, you can uh, leave in campus kind of feeling good about everything being resolved. Uh, Michelle makes a comment about having not received uh, any info yet from housing, and I'll say that we uh, are probably sending emails to uh, you or your students, so we're sending them to student emails. Um, we also have park arrival passes that will be arriving provided we had your address during the time that you were choosing arrival times. So that's coming in the mail very soon, either physical mail or most of our communication is through your you, at uark.edu uh, email. Yeah. yeah. As a student, you'll learn very quickly to check your student email very frequently. There's going to be a lot of important emails coming out, so be sure to check that out. Um, Whitney also asked, she said that she bought a parking permit for Garland um, Parking Garage, and she was wondering when she can pick that up. Today would be fine. <laughs> what was that? Today. Was <laughs> she can pick it up today. Uh, really, uh, the sooner the better, but uh, I'm kidding when I say today, but if you were here today and wanted to pick it up, you could. Uh, so I, what I would do for any student coming to campus with that question or something similar, I would get that permit and uh, pick it up as soon as, as, soon as I yeah. could. Uh, that's for garages and resident reserved and so on. Uh, now, let me mention this because it won't apply to everyone, but it will apply to some. If you have ordered online a green student permit, uh, we automatically mail that to the address in your file. And for a lot of students, that's an address that's away from the university, it's back home. So you'll wanna make sure and get that before you out of the mail before you come to campus. Uh, we have had students in the past, they show up to campus, they have no permit, it's actually literally in the mail, and it goes back to their house. So. Um, you want to, that's, that's one reason why you don't want to wait to the last minute to try to secure a green permit online. You want to take care of that promptly. Um, but if that does happen, if you're one of those students who get kind of caught in between, your permit is back home with mom and dad, but you're here, of course they can mail it to you and you'll have it. You can see us and get a temporary printout oh, nice. in the meantime okay. and, and just show that and, and you're still good to go. Very helpful. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, you mentioned getting a getting your parking pass as soon as you arrive on campus. Campus card, your um, student card is a really important one too. What about mm -hmm. not student card? What is it called? Your yeah, student ID. Yeah. Yes, your yeah. student ID. Mm -hmm. Campus card office. Yes. Very important thing to get as soon as you arrive. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't already have it. Yes. Um, the last question we have is Michelle was wondering if she needs a pass for move-in day. She's moving in on August twelfth. Which I know is an early arrival. It day. is an early move in. Um, mm -hmm. It shouldn't be any problem. Uh, we don't have passes just for parking on move in days because that's, as mentioned, all orchestrated through housing. Mm -hmm. um, but here again, what we just mentioned a minute ago if you get on campus, you have made arrangements to have a particular type of permit, I'd go ahead and get it. That way I you would have it and, and you can begin using it right away. Uh, but in this case, like in, in, in every day on campus at the university, always make sure that you're not parked somewhere that your permit doesn't allow you access. Mm -hmm. uh, when we looked at the map earlier, you might have remembered seeing the blue shaded areas. Uh, that's reserved for faculty and, and staff, and they pay extra for those spots. If you have a green permit 
uh, you're not supposed to be in there because actually they paid to be there. Uh, so we, that's why we have to enforce parking for different reasons is to make sure everybody has access to the, the parking that they paid to have. Um, for your part, if you're an, uh, a returning student or if you're a brand new student, uh, we always just ask you to make sure that you know where you can legally park because we really don't want you to have a citation and and uh, if everybody parked illegally you can imagine uh, that it might chaos. be chaotic. Chaos. It would be chaos. Very chaotic. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we've gotten a lot of good questions and some questions that we got from Instagram mm -hmm. earlier. We appreciate all that. Yeah. Um, what other things we want to talk about when it comes to parking? I want to mention a couple of things that are important coming yeah. up. And this is at the front end of the school year. Uh, and this is true even if you're not new to campus. Some of you are coming back. You're, you're a sophomore. You're going to be a junior. You're going to be a senior. You kind of know how parking works. But everybody needs this reminder. Of course, the first day of class is Monday, August 26th. If you're parked illegally on Sunday right before that, it's not a bad thing. But if you leave it there, then all of a sudden you're parked illegally on Monday, and that's the first day of class, mm -hmm. and we have literally thousands of people descending upon the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 27,000 students. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and we have thousands of employees. Mm. Uh, and I tell people all the time, when, when this school goes it cranks up in the fall and then every day thereafter this is like a small city mm -hmm. so if you are parked we're, we're going to push this out on social media as well but please please make sure if your car is parked somewhere that maybe it shouldn't be on sunday before classes start get out there on sunday and move it to where it needs to be mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to think well i'll get up early and then i'll go move it at six in the morning because you if you're going to class that first day you have other things that you need to be thinking about so we urge everybody that Sunday before first class to, to make sure you're in the right place uh, because we, you know, we literally have thousands of people coming. Um, you know, we've got people living here already, but then we have others coming in. So uh, it's better for you if, if you park, make sure on that Sunday before class that everything's where it should be. David, we've got a question from Philip, and he asks us, what is transportation like on campus? Is it free? What do students do if they do if they need to get home and transit is done for the night? So we'll take it one by one. Okay. Um, what is transportation like on campus? I think specifically transit. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're really we're really proud of Razorback Transit, and um, like everything in transit and parking, it's it's expensive to run, but we don't have to charge students or anyone else anything to ride a Razorback Transit bus. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, they have a huge budget that they have to take care of, and here's a, a bit of trivia. Uh, each new Razorback Transit bus is about $450,000 a piece. That's what I heard last. Uh -huh. So it's not like we can just go out and buy a couple of new buses anytime. Um, but there's a, it's a lot of money, but some of that is provided by a federal grant, and so we don't charge riders. And that's great because students are paying for enough things as it is just mm -hmm. to go to college. So to answer the question, it's free, and we're proud to be able to tell people that. Um, but it is limited. It starts, you know, about 6.40 in the morning, and it runs till about 10.30 or 10.40 at night. You can catch a bus anywhere you need to go in Fayetteville or on campus. So that's very convenient. It's very helpful. Now, if you're caught somewhere, let's say you're, you're, if you uh, are somewhere... Late at night. 11 o'clock, midnight. Can, yeah, you can't call Razorback Transit to come and get you. Mm -hmm. But on our website, if you go to the Safe Ride uh, oh, link, yeah, yeah. It, that's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Safe Ride, and they make this clear too, they are here on campus to help you get to where you live. Mm -hmm. Whether it's your residence hall or where, if you're staying somewhere else in town, they take you to only your address. Uh, we've had some students in the past think, well, maybe they could take us from this party to another party. Oh, my can. gosh. Uh, that, that's not what <laughs> Safe Ride is here for. Safe Ride is to get you home. Gotcha. And that's, the, that's their only purpose. So if you're somewhere where you're without a ride, uh, you, can, you can do that. And, it, and you'll look at the, uh, the link on our website, and it'll tell you the, the, the ins and outs of that operation mm -hmm. and the hours that they're available to. So nobody yeah. needs to feel like they're all alone. Mm -hmm. um, when they're going to college or university. Yeah. I'll make a quick plug too for uh, bicycling in our community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's late at night, we have a really safe community and we have a great place called the Greenway that runs throughout our city too. So you could potentially bike from one end of Fayetteville to the other, mm -hmm. you know, super late at night, one o'clock, two o'clock. It can be, can feel 
just because it's so dark, but it's really quite safe. So consider bicycles too. And we have what, Via Ride? Via Ride. Via Ride. Mm -hmm. And is, is Parking Transit involved with that a little bit? We are involved with it. That's not something we created. Okay. Uh, it was started uh, in a partnership with the university and with the city of Fayetteville. Uh, we uh, have our hand in it though in a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of wanted that to be a little bit under our umbrella. Um, so we, we help promote that. Uh, there's a link on our website that will connect you with that and with all the information. Uh, that's not a free service that we provide. It, it, you know, Feel Right is a company that, that serves a lot of communities like ours. And so you'll want to read about that and read about what the cost would be to you as a student if you want to use those bikes. But it's really kind of a cool setup. Yeah, you bet. Well, anything else we want to talk about when it comes to parking? Covered a lot. Covered a lot of terrain, well, a lot of ground, a lot of miles. I can tell you that <laughs> a couple of things that come to my mind that we always want to emphasize with our students. First, you probably heard some bad things about us. I mean, it happens. Uh, I, I hear some of the rumors that are out there. Some of those rumors are not really true. If somebody says that we write out parking citations, yes, that's true. Um, but sometimes people say things like, uh, the people that write up the citations are doing it because they're paid on a commission. That's not true. <laughs> uh, Receive things, a commission. Yeah, you know, things like that are all okay. They have a quota of how uh -huh. many they have okay. to write up. That nothing like that's true. Uh, th the truth is, here's what I want you to know: is we're really here to help you. Um, one of our interns wrote a, an essay about working here, and she wrote, uh, "Transit and parking is really not the big bad wolf that everybody says they are." And I would concur with that because we're just people like you are. We have a job that we need to do, and, and we're all about safety, and we're all about helping uh, students and employees just get to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. that, that's our main function. And I will add this as well. We are uh, we um, on campus. This is an educational institution. You're going to get a great education here, and we're proud of that, and we're proud to be a part of it. And at Transit and Parking, we look at it like we're supporting the educational mission of this university. Uh, you need to get to class, you need to get your work done. Uh, you, you've got a lot of things to be concerned about to take care of all of your obligations. We just wanna help facilitate that process. Uh, so if we can get you where you need to be on campus with as little of a hassle as possible, that's what we try to do. Um, and that leads me to the next point. Sometimes you might have a question or you might even have a better idea or a different perspective. <laughs> we encourage you to contact us about that because that's helpful. We'll take feedback from students. Uh, you can contact us in a number of ways. Uh, the email is on our website. Uh, you can certainly call. Uh, you can certainly email me if you want. Uh, my email is, is on our, our WordPress site, but I, I'm at dbw010 at uark.edu. You can, you can email me and say, hey, I've got this question. So we are, are welcoming interaction with students because I think that's helpful for everybody involved. And it eliminates some misunderstandings sometimes. Um, I'd also say we'd like you to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we provide information on all of that. And we have a WordPress site called Talk TMP. That's in addition to our regular website. Mm -hmm. Did you so point it out for us, Jan? Right there. All right, let's see. Okay. You can, you can connect with those anytime you want. The, the top uh, website is the one that has all of the regulations, the requirements, how you buy a permit, all of those nuts and bolts, they're on there. If you go to Talk TNT, you're going to find some articles about, some of it's about parking, some of it's about college life or just general interest. This is more of an online magazine that we provide. Um, but both of those are, are something that we'd like you to connect with. We think it might be uh, something very helpful. So contact yeah. us uh, uh, on any day on any of those issues. We had a couple final comments come in, and I thought we might go ahead and address them and kind of, and then and then end our very informative program here. Um, one is from EA. Uh, sorority recruitment runs late at night. Can Safe Ride be used to get back to the halls? They can be used to get back to the halls if you live there. Yep. If you yeah. don't, if you live somewhere else on campus, of course, they're, I mean, in town, they're going to take you to where the address is. We will certainly bring you back to your home on campus. Yes. yes. Of course. <laughs> Madeline um, says that she will be an incoming freshman this fall. Can't wait to have you come here. Um, I'm saying that to her. <laughs> and uh, received a new car after I filled out my parking permit up, uh, information. 
where should I go on campus slash email to update my car info before I move in? Uh, that can be done uh, on our website. Okay. Uh, you, you can go in and change it in, in uh, my parking account. Yeah. If you run into any problem, though, I would call here and have someone walk you through it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. 575-PARK. Yeah, update it that way online. Um, and Paula's just uh, chiming in with some good information. She purchased her son's green permit and was able to print out a temporary permit good for 10 days from today. So awesome. good to be able to use those temporaries mm -hmm. as need be. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Well, like I said, we're just here uh, to try to serve uh, this university. Uh, we want to help you get to where you need to be. Uh, communicate with us uh, anytime you want. Uh, I will say this. There are sometimes on social media, some folks are, aren't always fair with their criticism. We understand that. Here, here is, here's the real deal. If somebody gets a parking citation, whether it's me or anybody else, if you get a parking citation, you never really feel good about it. I mean, even if you're a person that knows I deserve that, that's on me, you still don't feel good about it. It's just not pleasant. And we understand that. So if you are telling us that you don't like it when you got a parking citation, we agree with you. We wouldn't like it either. But uh, please just work with us and we'll work through any issue that you might have and try to resolve any question you have too. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and thank you to David for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, David. Great. Yes. Wish we could do it again. <laughs> um, tomorrow, we're actually going to do a live tour just like this about the move-in process. So be sure to check that out. We'll have a lot of great information and tips for you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching today.